singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the podcast where we have absolutely no idea what we're doing, but we sure do enjoy doing it. Uh, <laughs> this is the Justin Moore Podcast. I'm your co-host, J.R. The Handler. On the other end of the Zoom machine today, across from me in his Pittsburgh Steelers sweatshirt, is the one and only country music's finest, Justin Moore. What's up, J.M.? What's up, buddy? Good to, good to talk to you. Uh, it's been all of, what, Two days since we've yeah. seen each other. One day. <laughs> it's the farthest you've been away uh, from me in a month, Justin. You used to, uh, no, we've been man. talking to each other two feet apart for like a month, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah, we um, – sorry we missed you guys last week. Um, but uh, we're exhausted. Um, I am still. I don't know about you. Uh, I'm drinking we coffee. Just got, I tell you how we, tired I am. I'm drinking coffee. Yeah. I don't ever drink coffee. We just got off of a – Two week run um, on the bus where we went right at eight thousand miles. So, uh, needless to say, we're we're a little uh, uh, road hard and put up wet or whatever. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, um, you know, with, we we kind of talked about why we choose to do the bus rather than fly. Um, and being out on the West Coast, we, we never are on the road two weeks straight. It's usually three days at a time or something like that. But uh, just the way it worked out, uh, this particular trip, and we'll get into what we were doing specifically, but it required us to be gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, we hit every time zone. Um, so I don't know about you, JR, but I, I'm completely out of whack as far as sleep, eating, uh Anything pertaining to like getting through a day <laughs> in a normal fashion is just completely off. My, I mean, I, I've slept good the last couple of nights being back in my own bed, but I mean, I, I've slept during the day. I've taken naps. I'm still exhausted, even though I feel <laughs> yeah. like I've done nothing but sleep. Um, I anyway, I, I don't know. But I don't know if you're kind of in the oh, same. Yeah vain or what I, I hopefully it's not just me no it's definitely not just you i'm in the same boat yeah i've slept great but i mean i feel like i could sleep for like a week but i'm like i really yeah. have been we've just been cooped up it's kind of it's so weird it's not like we ran a marathon yeah. but it feels like i ran about 10 of them and i and and getting home and getting adjusted i just feel like now where my lips and uh nose and and mouth is getting back normal because like you said yeah. we went through all the time zones we were way up west in montana we were, we did an outdoor show washington 40 something degrees in montana one night and then we were in washington then we we're in california it's dry and it's rainy and then through the desert and all that my lips were so parched and so dry in my nose so it's finally getting back there but yeah i'm with you i'm just uh i'm just exhausted like i said i'm having i'm drinking coffee here at what three o'clock in the afternoon um just trying to get some trying to get my mojo going because i got a bunch of stuff and we've got to we've got to uh go up to fayetteville this weekend so trying to get some stuff knocked out but yeah that yeah. two-week run like you said we don't do it very often um once or twice a year but it's um and a lot of times we'll fly on that and get this but we just kind of hunkered down um this last time and and you know that that one trip across from san jose to bloomsburg pennsylvania that was a that mm. was a hike buddy yeah, and it, it, it's so funny. I mean, we were in different climates, which you kind of touched on, dry, elevations. hot. Then, yeah, different elevations. I mean, we pretty much ran the gamut mm -hmm. as far as I mean, weather. I mean, it would be 40 one day and then 90 the next. I mean, yeah. it was it just was like – it was, but it was wild, but uh, but it was it good. Was it was good, a good bunch time. of good shows. I mean, we got to see a bunch of cool, meet a bunch of cool people, and do a bunch of cool mm -hmm. things. I mean, we can talk about some of that in a minute. But yeah. um, it had great crowds everywhere. But met a bunch of good country music fans and um, just people at the venues. It was good. I thought it was a good run. It was just tiresome, but everything was was good. Luckily, was. we didn't have we, bus trouble either. Knock on wood. That was yeah. I th that ooh. was something that kept kind of creeping into my mind like mm -hmm. oh no i hope we make it here i hope we make it there and don't have to like jump off and either trade buses <laughs> it would have just been <laughs> awful just, so yeah, yeah we, we were fortunate in that regard we uh but yeah we started out in um 
I think Billings. we started in Mon- Montana, yeah. And uh, it was, this was kind of our last uh, run of the year with Granger, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, so that was good to, to close it out the right way with those guys. Beautiful out in Billings. And then we played Butte, Montana, which I believe is the one that was in the 40s. Um, yep, that was the one, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's the first time I've ever on stage and – I guess 15 years of doing this that uh, uh, I, I wore like a heavy jacket, like not like a trendy, like like a heavy coat, like a right. winter coat. Um, so which was kind of kind of crazy. It, it, and I'm cold natured as it is, but uh, it's it's a as you can imagine, it's pretty difficult to play guitar when your hands are frozen. Like we had hot hands and the whole bit um and then we went to i believe it was spokane yeah played a show um, another show with granger in spokane yeah and um inside yeah thank thank thankfully inside so that was good uh yeah really we got good to see crowd. saw some of our bobcat buddies from i think it was peak machinery there uh, in spokane yeah they were cool hung out with them. i've been i've forgotten about that it's, it feels like it's been so yeah. long ago <laughs> uh, spokane was we, pretty that day i remember that i walked around a little bit spokane was beautiful that day it was good weather it's kind of warm and um yeah, it was real pretty. I walked down by the water and stuff. They still have that's where the seventy four, I believe, World's Fair was. So they still have the big pavilion and all oh, that wow. stuff there. Where we played was actually built as the state of Washington's pav- uh, pavilion for that World's Fair. The place, the building we played, that was built for that World's Fair in seventy four. Oh wow, I didn't was, know that. Yeah, yeah, that's it was cool. Part of that. The only bad thing about that day was because yeah, we had a great crowd. We met some new friends from Bobcat uh, locally there and. Uh, was um, our band bus driver, uh, my brother, Brian Uzzle, uh, got his electric bike stolen that day. Oh, yeah, awesome. that's right. Because um, yeah. there was a lot of homeless people milling around even in the middle of the day looking crazy and just wild. But, uh, yeah, Brian turned his back for a second, and some guy had stole his bike and couldn't catch him. So, thanks. Yeah, I forgot about that. Thanks, Yeah, Grimmel. that's uh, it's too bad. But, uh, yeah, but that but was then it. Then from, from there, we headed to uh, – California, San Jose, uh, San Jose, California, and did a. Uh, I've, I've done this event for, I don't know, six, seven times in a row, years in a row, with the exception of uh, a couple because of COVID. But um, uh, it's an acoustic show we've done uh, at a winery, actually in San Martin, I think is where that yeah. is, but near near San Jose and. Um, along with a, a radio station out there, KRTY, and um, and last year we do it for charity. Uh, it's it's uh, it's been different. It's been benefiting different things over the years, but um, but uh, last year we we added uh, a golf tournament also to it to to raise money for the first tee. Um, and and another uh, organization that uh, uh, I'll, I'll find the name of it, uh, but uh, a really, really really sweet couple who had a had a child die of of SIDS, um, and it's a charity they charity they started in, in her name and likeness and and Aubrey so Aubrey Brown, Aubrey Brown. There you go. Um, I knew it was Aubrey, but I couldn't remember. Yep. Anyway. Um, so we did that for the we did the show one day and then the next day we we did the golf tournament and then from there uh we started our journey 3000 mile journey yeah uh, across the country uh, to literally literally 3000 miles uh from from there to uh Bloomsburg Pennsylvania to go play another it's a fair. 48 degree show i think that was the other cold one wasn't it yeah it was I think it, yeah. I mean it, it was, was good just, weather. It was good weather though in California while we were there. It got a little cool. That it was night, beautiful. It was, it was in the seventies during the day, rained, like and low seventies. It kind of sprinkled a little like bit that. that day too, which is random for that area to get any rain. I know when yeah. we were going through somewhere. Uh, oh no, it was through Winters, and I text Party and said, "Hey, your mom and him getting some rain today." I don't know. Where oh you're yeah, at, yeah, but it's yeah. raining here. And he's That's like, right. "Thank, thank the Lord, we need it." You know, because before that, we came down through um like by uh mount shasta and uh yeah it was beautiful 
and Beautiful. but the but all yeah but all the lakes and all like were all dry remember how far down the boats were and so stuff? down i mean yeah. i would guess they were hundreds of feet i mean low i yeah. mean yeah it yeah was, 100 foot low or something yeah. crazy I, I, I mean I, I put some pictures up of it even on instagram and um actually got a, a reply from one of the listeners here uh karen uh, New York Steeler girl put breathtaking. Just what I need to keep me going since I'm stuck in rehab facility just after a TKR. It gives me motivation to keep moving forward. Hopefully next summer I'll be able to go to one of Justin's shows. Love the podcast. Great to listen and tune out. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Karen. Uh, Twelve fifteen country girl. Uh, that was on Instagram. Nice. Yes, she saw that because I put those pictures up because I was like, you hear about it and you kind of see, but when you're right there looking at it, you realize, damn, them boats are way down farther way than down. where you see where it originally was. Yeah, it was. Uh, um, so anyway. It was. It was shocking. I mean, looking at it, like you know, we're Jr. grew up on a lake. There, I've got a bunch of them around me, and you see them fluctuate some, but not to the level of this right here yeah I mean, and ours are because if ours do it's because they're letting them down to <laughs> do they're power. drawing them down yeah, yeah. usually yeah. but yeah it was wild and um but it was good and they got a little sprinkle there then yeah and we uh but so yes yeah, nate deaton shout out to nate and that bunch uh for taking care of us on the west coast and matt stell uh he was on um, that's right yeah matt was matt was there. there with his big mustache y'all see matt stell at the show he's got a rocking mustache right now he's got a pretty uh, strong stash game going yeah he on. does like tall him. joker like that sucker's him. tall we talk about needing a big man for yeah. uh, our basketball team we might have to enlist stale that's a tall well he son, played right? in college he played football and basketball huh okay i thought basketball. he just played basketball but okay uh, i thought he played uh, anyway nonetheless he's a good athlete yeah. and he's really tall i mean tall it, tall tall what he's six 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 seven i, I mean he's tall or man. taller i can't remember what i asked him the first time and he told me like three inches taller than i said i was like dang because i'm six one or so and he i mean i'm looking straight up to him. yeah he's really tall yeah really so, really tall. and he's arkansas so we can claim him yeah. on team justin moore for uh there you World, go i like uh, it country music basketball uh championship sure. tournament um so yeah for but then sure. we went across the country on the bus which was you know, it was long and tiresome, and it's kind of like, you know, at one point I remember I was doing push-ups on the bus because I was just like a dog needing to do zoomies. I was so – because we had – we only stopped for food and fuel and kept going. Like, we didn't even get out and go do We anything. didn't get out and, like, go sit in a restaurant. We'd stop, grab something, keep rolling. Yeah. So, I, by, after so. a couple of days, I was just like, ugh, dude, stir crazy. We did – but it was a cool – I remember we did stop at a cool truck stop up in uh, Nebraska. Yeah. And, uh, got some food. It was really neat. Um yeah, I'm trying to think neat, what that was called. There was a few cool little spots we stopped at along the way, along the long road, but it was wild looking out the window. You know, it was just didn't know if it was day or night. It didn't matter. I mean, one day we'd be up till six a.m. and it was just, it was just. Strange. Oh, I mean, there. I mean, I I think uh, there were maybe three days where I stayed up literally all night. I mean, I, it was just completely out and of we whack. And we weren't I mean, throwing down partying either. I no, mean, no. I'm, I mean, I'm it, capable it was of just, it, but it wasn't that we were just. No, it was, you know, one day we're on west. Literally, one day we're on, uh, you know, west coast time, and then, and a day and a half later, we're on the east coast time. I mean, it was, just, it's weird what it does to your body, and and your your internal clock and everything is just so out of whack. I was. Trying to do a little bit of the radio show, but I finally told him, "I'm like, guys, y'all don't want me. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm coming or going." Or, um, <clears throat> so I've gotten up and done that the last couple of days, which, again, I'm I'm so exhausted. Um, yeah, I've, I've tried to nap a little bit yesterday and today, but it hadn't really helped. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, if we seem somewhat incoherent during this this podcast uh you'll have to forgive us but we didn't want to go another week without yeah we had uh, all we had all the in, so we had all these shows and fun you know stuff we had done I wanted to make sure to let it keep everybody updated on their travels and stuff um and yeah talking about when we got to bloomsburg yeah we played a, i'm just looking through pictures here to help me i took pictures along the trip to help me remember what where we yeah. were and what we did uh but yeah you had the you had the jacket with the fur on it um uh, again that night because it was it yeah. wasn't much wasn't much warmer than Butte, Montana. Uh, but these shows we had um, one of our favorite new guys we've met in a long time, Jake Worthington, on these shows, and um, he <laughs> that I was looking at a picture of him. That boy's country. Uh, he got up and sang Dinosaur with you at the end of the show, yeah. and uh, that was cool. 
Um, yeah, he's great. Blue, by the way, if you if you guys haven't uh, haven't uh, listened to his his music or, or don't know much about him, uh, look look him up, Jake Worthington. Um, we always joke like I don't like anything new, <laughs> but uh, he's he's really really good, super talented country. If you like, you know. Stone Cold Country stuff, 90s type sounding stuff, uh, Mark Chestnut, Clint Black, that kind it's of. George, he's kind of got a George Jones yeah. thing. <sighs> yeah, he's really, really good. I, yeah. I, I, probably my favorite newer artist uh, over the last handful of years, to be right. honest with you. Yeah, same. Um, and, he, and he just shows up. They don't even have an intro. He looks like he just got done off a tractor. They just roll in a bunch of country yeah. dudes. They're all just country yeah. as get out. It's funny. He gets there. He doesn't have an electric guitar. He just says, oh, I forgot my electric. I got an acoustic. Uh, reckon y'all got one I can borrow? <laughs> like, yeah, Roger set him up with a guitar. I mean, I just I love that's guys. funny. Yeah. Uh, and his tour manager, Jordan, we became good buddies. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, I'm going to try to get him to come down and hang in the off season and come to Florida with me or something. Um, but then, yeah, the next night we were at Elmira, New York. Got to work with an old promoter buddy of ours and do a, a, a gig up there, which is always fun. Um, uh, and uh, Jake was also on that show opening, but um, had a special guest come out uh, yeah. for the for the encore. Uh, had Derek St. Holmes from uh, Ted Nugent's band. I mean, sang on Stranglehold, played guitar and all over the world, Ted Nugent's band. And he was in the area, and we'd met him in Florida. Um earlier this year playing a show yeah yeah he was and with then, another band uh, i forget who yeah. but um and so he was in the area we had said hey if you're around come on jam and um he got up and that was pretty cool yeah uh, i'll never forget we were in uh we were in florida in the, i think it was summertime and it was actually when jamie and aiden came out yeah. and I, maybe your mom even yeah, we Seems did like. something down there. Yeah, I can't even remember what. Anyway, that was. we were uh, there was a pond there. If you remember, mm -hmm. uh, we some of us went fishing during yep. the day, and and the opening band was I don't know if they were sound checking or or what. And we're going, man, that 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 guy singing sounds great. Yeah, like, sounds really just like good. Stranglehold. Yeah, I think they were doing Stranglehold or something, and we're like, man, it sounds just like the guy that did it, or what you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, come to find out, it was because it was him, and, and so we got to know him a little bit that day, and at least Raj and some of the man guys did, and and uh, so it was it was really neat to have him out. We did uh, Cat Scratch Fever and Stranglehold uh, with him, and it was it was pretty neat, man. Yeah, um, and he still sounds great. I mean, and plays yeah. great, and um, looks awesome on stage. I mean, the whole bit. You know, yeah, just the whole thing. Total rock star. Yeah. Total rock got, star. Yeah. Just got uh -huh. a. Um, this is a side note here, and we can put it on here. We won't tell who the guest is, but I do have us a guest locked in for next week, and it's a she. Nice. And nice. Um, everybody's gonna love this one. This is gonna be fun. Me and you've talked about it before, but I t her person reached out to me this morning, and she's good nice. for next, next Wednesday. So we're gonna do that. Very so, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So up to date, up to date news here uh, at the Justin Moore podcast. Um, just going through here. So we did that Elmira show. Then we stopped through Nashville on our way home um, and did some stuff for the upcoming single and album, which is exciting. Can't tell a whole lot about that yet, but will soon. Um, yeah, we. I don't even know when we can talk about that and why we can't now. It yeah, makes no know. sense at all. But The new uh, single will be out in just a few weeks. But, yeah, we stopped uh, in Nashville and did my least favorite thing ever and had a photo shoot um uh, for a couple of reasons the the album one um and then uh the new single uh which is a duet and and so the the other party on on the duet with me and i uh, shot some some video and some some pictures and 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 stuff like that just to just for the singles, so you guys will be seeing all that. And, yeah. Uh, really soon, in the next week or so. Yeah. And maybe we can talk more about it next week. But uh, yeah. really excited about both the album and, and the new single. So. And I'm really, really excited that 
I won't have to do, do another photo shoot for like <laughs> five years. Cause I do yeah. one about every five years. Most, most artists do them. I don't know with every project or so. And I've, I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that. Um, y'all can deal with, I don't think any of y'all have ever bought an album because of my picture on it. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I told him that day. We're shooting all this and that. And, Oh, should we wear this jacket? Should we wear that shirt? Well, I go, guys, you know, there's 40 people there, you know, and they're all they have a say so and something, it seems. And they were all great, but oh, yeah. I just, it ain't no fun for me wearing makeup and getting pictures made of myself. But, uh, but anyhow, I go, guys, it really don't make a damn because nobody's ever listened to a song of mine because of the picture on the front of the single or the album or you know yeah you told that lady so. she's like well, but makeup you're like ma'am i never put makeup for anything i've ever done in my career she's yeah. like just just a little like just so you're not shining when they're doing the lights or something yeah. you're like yeah i mean if you want to but i mean uh, it's really unnecessary so it was yeah, like well, br it was like brush brush you're like all right i'm good where's my drink all right back to yeah this. So, so for those out there who don't know i'm assuming everybody knows this but that might, this is a good point to bring up jr so you know, especially early on in your career when you really don't have a say so in anything, but but most artists, uh, I would say easily the majority, um, I don't know what the percentage would be, ninety percent probably or something, for every video, for every photo shoot, most of the time for red carpet stuff, um, you you get your makeup done. Whether you're a guy or girl, it yeah, doesn't hell, matter. and a lot of acts now, especially and definitely female acts, they carry hair and makeup with them on the road all the time. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, oh yeah, 100%. especially the, the the ladies, but oh, yeah. um, but even guys, I mean, like, uh, you know, anytime you're on camera or mm -hmm. whatever, and I got to the point. I don't know, ten years ago or eight years ago or whatever it was, I was like, guys, can we knock this off? Like, really, it doesn't like. I'm not Brad Pitt. I'm not. I'm not ever going to be with any amount of makeup, like. And so I just finally got to the point. I'm like, ah, we're good. We don't need to do that. We, you know, whatever. <laughs> so they always send somebody, and I. They just sit there doing nothing most of the time because I'm like, I don't need it. And they're like, you sure? I go. Yeah, we're good. Well, I mean, <laughs> I feel kind of rude, but I don't even mean it. I'm like, hell, you're getting paid. Just sit there yeah. and have fun. You're like, you want you want anyway. some of this? You're, you're like, no, nah, I got to dip in right now. Maybe a little yeah. bit. <laughs> it's like, like, it was good, good though. But man. shout out, shout out to but our shoot. producer of this podcast and uh, a big part of our management team, Cody, uh, for running a good shoot that day and, and a good team he had to <laughs> together. And um, yeah, it was it, good, efficient. Yeah, um, we got a lot done. Really, wasn't I got too bad. we got to eat Chick Fil A for lunch. You know. I got to catch yeah. up with Joey G uh, and Pete and Coach. Happy Drew. birthday to Joey G, yeah. which is today, not when you're listening, but as we're recording this, his birthday. Yep, today. Joey G. So it's, he's uh, got 11 years on me and uh, about 9% less body fat. <laughs> <laughs> and, or more. Yeah, both, of, both of us. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so but, it, uh, I thought it was a good day, you know, and we had good weather in Nashville. It was warm again. Like we were saying, we were getting closer to home, so I started feeling like I was acclimating more. So by the time right. I left Nashville and got home, it was kind of like, all right, I'm like I say, my, you know, my lips and my, the, just parchedness. I guess if you live out west, eventually you get used to it. But us, us deep south boys, I like my humidity. I'm just used to that. I just kinda, right. <laughs> it works for me. So, but yeah, so I got home. No uh, doubt. I got home late Monday night and then kind of took yesterday, Tuesday off as much as I could, getting a few things uh, going for um, next year. Got some shows booked for next year. That was good. I um, actually talked to a buddy of ours. Uh, shout out to Frank. Um, uh, talked to him about what we had talked about, about hunting uh, next year. He's working on some dates on us for that. So nice. It's going to be fun. We're, we, we say all the time, you know, people ask about us hunting and fishing, and we used to go more, and it seems like, one, the kids yeah. have gotten bigger and, you, and more of them. And uh, They're me more move, involved in stuff. Yeah, you and know. me moving and us to a new place. And then COVID, we really haven't. And four or five years not like we used to i mean we've probably went fishing mm -hmm. twice in the past three years and we i ain't yeah. been me and you haven't been hunting together in f at least five years except for the one we did with um have we 
Oh, well, we did go. I take that back. Yeah, we did go with, with Lucas and them. With Lucas. Lucas yes, yeah. we did. Sorry, Golly, sorry, I didn't go hunting, but that was them deer ridiculous. Was, them deer were so big. I didn't yeah. know what to shoot. I tried to look at it. It was ridiculous. But I was so exhausted. It, it was another, yeah. like, it was on the tail end of another run, like, today. Yeah. Or, or I mean, this past run, rather. Right. Uh, and so I, I really didn't get to enjoy it. I, I got a, I killed a big deer, but. Yeah. I forgot um, about that. You're right. But other than that, it's been a long time. And, um, and you know, I I mean, I've hunted at home, taking the kids and that kind of stuff. But haven't gone on a trip in a, in a while, which I used to do yeah. every year. And um, But we get asked all the time for, for these type things. And um, we, we, we don't have the opportunity to take advantage of them most of the time. But... This particular trip, Jr. and I have been talking about, and we're like, we have to, we have to do this. Yeah, we absolutely have to do this. It's a hunting trip uh, in Lanai, Hawaii. Yep. So uh, we're, we're like, we got to. This is one we can take the women on and get away mm -hmm. with. Yeah. We're gonna you know. try. We're gonna try to go to Colorado and uh, elk hunting. Um, in 23 yep. and then the beginning of 24 go to lanai to uh the lanai deer um which we, we talked about and heard people talk about how they're yeah. delicious and bountiful and just, they need man management of the species yeah. there and this and that right and, i mean that's a long ways for us so it's one of the things we got to schedule it 24 to get all of our ducks in a row with touring right. and home and everything but uh but yeah the wives will go so hopefully every, it'll work smooth and it, I'm, I'm yeah that'll be cool it. yeah no doubt um, no doubt so yeah talking about that everybody i've t everybody i did a couple of errands yesterday and today here around town everybody i ran into because uh, it's cool down here now like we talked about yesterday on the phone it's cool up there you said too and um at night and uh everybody's well hunting weather hunting weather you know everybody's oh, everybody's yeah. itching you can tell everybody's it's just that little click of cool weather <laughs> everybody's got the bug uh. now you know yeah, and I'm starting to see, like, around here, what you'll notice, uh, like, all the gas stations will say, deer hunters welcome. And all, right. You know, start seeing, uh, you know, sacks of corn outside gas stations and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we're getting there, man. It's it, Unfortunately, it warmed back up a little bit today. It was perfect yesterday. Um, but heated back up a little bit today. But it's 80 right now, so – but yeah. the – the the mornings you know being you know mid 40s to low 50s is it's it feels like deer season you know yeah. what i mean oh yeah for sure so, i'm sure y'all's low ain't quite that low but um, no not here but, but you it's definitely different you know you can right. tell it's cuz it's not as humid the air's thinner <sighs> which is crazy to think about because here it's it's so perfect and then you know, about 800 miles away down in Florida. Yeah, I was going to say right now. That's what I was going to say. Speaking of weather, I watched the video you sent me, I think from what was it? Fort Myers, Fort maybe? Myers. Yeah. Uh, damn, man. It, and it's it's close to a category five or is a category five. Yeah. now, right? And Jamie. Yeah. And Jamie just sent me pictures as we were talking earlier uh, of uh, Safety Harbor there in the Tampa Bay where he lives. And it's it's pulled all the water out. It's just mud. And it's usually this huge bay, and it's it's a foot deep in most places and stuff. But doesn't it do that, and then right, and it comes back. comes back, yeah, yeah. Like so, so they don't. They're just waiting down there now. So prayers to all those people in Florida. I hope everything. Yeah. Um, hope everybody's okay. And I know. A, so Jamie people, just hunkering down. Yeah, they're hunkering down. He's not in a flood zone and stuff. So he, you know, he didn't. He didn't ever find a generator. No, didn't get a generator. But he's he's uh, about to be busy with work then too, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, this yeah. is this is what when he gets super, yeah, oh yeah, busy, oh yeah, stuff like this, natural disasters and oh yeah, big time stuff. The insurance world. I've got a couple of buddies down there in insurance, and that's yeah, they're going to be slammed as soon as this is over. Um, trying to get everybody pieced back together. Hopefully, it's um, hopefully there's no loss of lives and it's just stuff. You know, hopefully, yeah, it's t it's it's t it's it's a weird deal. Like, it, it, I mean, it's terrible. Like, but for somebody who's in insurance, it's like. It's got to be a weird dynamic in your brain because you're yeah. going, oh, yes, this is going to yeah. be big business. Well, construction, everything. But, you think about what but if you oh want to – oh, my gosh, work? I don't want to – yeah, I don't, but no, I don't want this to happen. Yeah. But I, I, it's got to be a weird Yeah. Well, it's like if you, mindset, own, a, if you yeah. own a window company right now, 
you're like, oh, well, we've got to sell a lot of windows. Right. You know, things yeah, like that. Yeah, or you manufacture windows or what, yeah. whatever. Or if, you're, or if you're the local whatever, yeah. Or I mean, roofer. Or, yeah. I mean. Yeah, dis- you know, disasters and wars, that's when – that's when a lot of money moves around usually. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. hopefully everybody, like I said, hopefully everybody, hopefully it's just stuff and that the, hopefully everybody's got the right insurance and, right. um, and, and get safe and there's no loss of lives, uh, in Florida. And I don't know where it's going to go after that. It's going to cut up through Georgia and then looks like the Carolina's going to get a dose. Hopefully there's no flooding. Everybody be prepared now. I know even me, hopefully we're going to be fine, but I've got, <sighs> when we get off, I've got to finish cleaning my gutters on my house. Cause when I leave, I want to have just to make sure nothing gets flooded up or, right. you know, stuck because we're dry. You have leaks Dude, it's, and all It's that. so dry at my house right now. Like, my grass is, like, crunchy because we haven't had rain. And we usually get rain all year long, but, like, for the last month, we just really hadn't had any. So, I've, like, I got the sprinkler going today because it's, you know, it's crunchy. Um, so, but I say that to say that's a lot times worse if everything's dry like those, like what happened in New Mexico and Arizona and Texas a couple months ago because if it's bone dry, then you get a lot of rain. The surface is hard and it doesn't absorb it just it makes that's where you get it won't the suck flash. it in like normal yeah that's when you yeah. get the flash floods and like my gutters like i'm saying it's got a bunch of where the crepe myrtles have dumped stuff in them well if it gets dried compacted it's going to be like it's going to be hard so the water's not going to flow through it so i gotta get those clean so everybody in the path of this thing prepare yourselves as much you can get you some gas get your generators ready yeah jamie that's what he said he was he had froze five or six uh, gallon jugs of uh or two gallon jugs of um water because he said if he keeps everything closed that'll keep it froze for a couple of days <laughs> till he can get something happening so right. he's got a plan and he's stocked and you know he's a boy scout so uh, hopefully he'll be fine <laughs> i yeah. just you know i just worry sometimes even though i know he's way more capable than i am i'm still it's my little brother and my nephew you'll be safe you know I, but nothing he can do i mean that, you know and you really just don't know these things turn that's what i said the one sally a couple of years ago that we ha- we went through that was brutal that i'm like i ain't staying for no more like if they even close to that um wasn't supposed to happen it was supposed to go somewhere else in the last couple of hours and it was too late to leave so let's hope everybody's getting right. safe down there i didn't know if i've got some q and a stuff i don't know if you want to do a few of those or um let's do it i had uh i had some let me dig up some Q&A. Before I do that, I, I'm going to go through a few little things real here. Some road stuff. I know I went through before and showed off some stuff that I'd picked up along the <coughs> road, so I figured I'd do these real quick. That way I can put them up so they won't just be on my desk. Uh, but talk about our buddies over there. We love them so much. Granger Smith got one of their laminates. I'm going to put that on my laminate deal here. That was our last run with them for the year. Hopefully we'll do more shows with them next year. Love that bunch. I uh, actually talked to Nard, their merch guy, earlier. They're going to some rock show in Nashville. I don't know if I knew somebody at the venue, but I don't think I do. I, we were talking about the other day. People ask me, and I will we'll say this on here to save everybody some time and effort. Um, I don't ever go to Nashville. I don't know what to eat there anymore. I don't know where to go. We were talking about the other day, the places yeah. we used to go. We, we'd be bopped around our normal little it's hood. It's so different, man. And we're like, I don't even know. We even, just went to- even the normal little place that – or area that yeah. we go to it don't look the same as it did uh, eight months ago i know i mean you're like oh man it's busy now we yeah. we never had to wait at chewy's yeah ever had to uh, wait yeah and it was just busy the whole time day and night and yeah. usually it's just so quiet back there where we where we hang but yeah we're uh, like so, the bumpkins too walking around there like oh yeah i'm sure there's m- much better food there now uh in that area that we probably walk right past and we always go to chewy's like every meal we love yeah, right. chewy's makes right. place and i know it's a chain but it's really good that's our so we're like let's just go there again yeah. okay i don't want to try this and it, not you, like it or whatever you look down so. the street i mean red door still the same uh um Broadway Brewhouse Midtown still the same, yeah. But then you look down where Losers and Winners used to be in Rebar. It used to just be those three little buildings. Now there, there used to be Nosh- Noshville was right there, which was awesome. Yeah. Now there's Food. four buildings on each side of Losers and Winners, and they're all got three stories. And I saw Losers is getting a big deck and stuff now. So it's just we didn't. Even, I didn't even go to a bar. We just went. Hey, I didn't even go have no. a drink anywhere. And Losers used to be. We talked about this too. Losers used to be. Uh, Kind of an industry hang. Kind of an place. industry hang, yeah. Songwriter um, place type. But now it's more of a college hangout bar deal. Yeah. So it's just it's different. But to your point, yeah, I had a I had a cousin reach out to me. I don't know, this was a couple of months ago. And 
and just where do I need to stay and this and that. I'm like, I don't even know. I, yeah. I really don't. I, 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 don't, I don't know anymore. I don't know restaurants. I don't know Mm-mm. where to stay. I mean, there's just so many, and I don't even recognize it yeah. down there. I, I always mean, tell people go so out different. to um, go out to Opry, Opry Mills. Go at the uh, the um, the hotel out there, the Gaylord. If you, I mean, if you can get. But a the room thing there. is, everybody wants to be right in the thick of everything yeah and well, walk and if you the, want to see what nashville I mean, used to be like go out there and then go over to the nashville palace and scoreboard and those bars out yeah. there music valley because that's the only little yeah. piece of what what i what that i know for sure kind of reminds yeah. me of that but so our so the point is yeah if you need suggestions on nashville don't ask us neither one of us lives there we don't even go no. hardly anymore so we don't know no. and people now people eat it up they love it and we hate it yeah. i mean we like the we like Nashville from 25 years ago, yeah. so we're not the right people to right. ask. Right. So. I'm going to say don't. No. It's, uh, it's, and it's great. People <laughs> love it. I mean, it was packed. I mean, but it's just, yeah. It's yeah. Just, I, I don't know where even broad to. Even Broadway's not the same. I no. mean, it, not even close. I mean, again, everybody eats it up and loves it, but it's not our. It's not yeah. my thing. I don't um next thing i got I on know, here so we sound like old grouchy old yeah. man well but. i'm just i'm just letting everybody know don't ask because i don't have a good suggestion you'd be more i'm gonna tell you something that might be closed because hell i don't know anymore after seeing it this past time because hell it'd been a year and it changed i mean like across from where we stay there was a house there they were trying to save and now within yeah since last time we were there they were pushed it down sky and rise. A, sky rise i'm like that was fast <laughs> But uh, anyway, next thing I got here was um, this was when I got to go to the Robert O'Keefe show back in May at the Orpheum in Wichita. I believe that's where it was. Uh, yeah, um, and he finished his tour. He's no no longer touring anymore. But y'all go listen to some Robert O'Keefe mu- music. Ever? Like, no, nah, he's done. He retired from the road. He's got like back wow. issues and stuff. Um, huh. This was my uh, the schedule for the celebration of life for the for Joe Gilchrist, who's the founding father of the Floribama and the Frank Brown Songwriter Festival. We got the Frank Brown coming up in uh, November. If any of you guys are down here on the coast uh, or traveling down here, y'all check that out. Frank Brown Songwriter Festival. Yeah, check seriously. Do that if you're if you happen to be down that way. It's uh, or want to make I a trip it, even. I don't know. I did it seventeen, eighteen years ago, something like that. But um, it's awesome. I mean, you'll see. You'll see people that you'll see people that are great that you've never heard of, but you'll become fans of. But you'll also see a lot of people, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, he wrote that, or she yeah. wrote that." Oh yeah. my, oh wow! I mean, it's right. it's neat. It's, yeah, we have you know, a lot of. I mean, new songs. kind of what Nashville used to be, quite honestly. A little bit talking yeah. about Nashville. I mean, it's um, that that. What is it? Three days, four days? Uh, like it's, that. Yeah, it's four, five, six. I think it's a week or so now. They do it. It long, might be. It, out. Yeah, it yeah. might be um but it's yeah, awesome though the, if you're a fan of music yeah and songwriting and all that stuff like there, there's liable to be <sighs> dean dylan one night then the next day's you know buddy cannon and his daughter and uh and, and uh, right. you know some uh, different people and i mean from newer songwriters to legends <laughs> to, to different yeah. types of music and stuff yeah so it's it's really cool but um that he was yeah, the founding like, fa- he was the founding I, father and um that's still going to happen and it's going to keep going my buddy brandon is going to take over joe spa as president of it so frank brown will continue for a long time yeah for example I, when i did it i don't know it was probably 18 19 years ago um i mean nobody had a clue who i was i was but i was playing what ended up being my first album like small town usa and backwoods and and i was probably paired with a dean dylan or somebody like that who you would know their songs but my point is it's really neat because you may look back and go oh my gosh we saw him or her at Mm-hmm. And now they're on TV. You're not, you know what I mean. And, or hear a song uh, and then be like, and hear it five years later and be like, right. oh, I heard somebody play that song. That was the song. Yeah, writer. yeah. And, and you'll see, uh, you know, people play songs that you, you know, right? Oh yeah, well, for sure. So yeah, and, it's, it's and really a lot, neat. A lot of people think the the person who sang the song wrote the song, but uh, that's not always the case. Yeah, and it's not just that at one location either like the, the i'm assuming they still do it the same yeah there, there's i mean literally shows going on at all times um it's almost like a fanfare kind of deal but for songwriters like, kinda, is that kind of yeah kind of sort of you know 
something yeah. like that. But so you can walk in this place and so and so will be playing. You walk over here and this one will be. It's it's neat. Yeah, I would encourage anybody to try to go if that that can. Yeah, check that out. Uh, Floribama uh, dot com and uh, the Frank Brown Songwriter Festival. Um, I wish I had the exact dates on it, but I don't. Uh, next thing I found here was uh, um, from last year. I guess this was just in some stuff I pulled out, but this is from last year. This was. Um, uh, from Colorado Springs, our buddy Chris Jansen's uh, day sheet. I guess I found that somewhere and stuck it back. I always try to grab random. Is that the stuff. day it held? Yeah, that was the day uh, it, we had the, the That was hail last storm. year? Yeah, it was May, not, May 29th, Man, 2021. That felt, it feels like that was seven years ago or something. I know, right? Uh, yeah, Mackenzie yeah. Porter, Jansen, and then you. And then, uh, yeah, because I think Mackenzie got through <sighs> her set. Jansen got going. Then it – because it hailed before her set, maybe at sound check, which I always say this is my security meetings. This is why I have to talk about weather because that day it was beautiful. And um, Yeah, because I, 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 we had either Ella and Kennedy out or, or might have been all three girls on the road. And we, we yeah. went and ate. I think we went and ate Mexican or something that day. Shocker. Imagine uh, that. But, then, but yeah, we, went to this, we went to this park, and it was beautiful. And then all of a sudden it was just downpour right yeah and it was just crazy so that's why and it was a beautiful day that day so that's why i always have to say that when i do my security meetings and i use that as an example um next thing i got here this is going to be a, like a little uh, a little game here just I, I got a set list from somebody we did a show with at some point in the last couple of years and i was going to read the set list i'm just going to randomly read so i'm not going to read it in order but i'm going to randomly okay. read off some songs and if you tell me um whose set list this is all right um Man, you're going to get this, too. Uh, Before She Was Mama. Fall. Amarillo. What was the the second one? Fall. F-A-L-L. Rumor Has It. Rumor. You Look Good. Clay. Clay. Clay Walker. (laughs) Clay Walker. Yes, sir. This was his set list. Make a Living. Dreaming. And, you know, we always abbreviate for the set list like you do. Right, right, right. Uh, Make a Living. Dreaming. Uh, Live Until I Die, Amarillo, Fall, Before She Was Mama, Cowboy Hat, Rumor Has It, Hypnotize the Moon, You Look Good, uh, Lonely Long, This Woman, Then then What, uh, What's It To You. And it's got the little notes here for the balls and the lays because they do that during the one song. And then the pyro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But what a great <laughs> set list, too, though. I mean, for as a fan of country I was going to say, that's a strong a set strong list right there, set man. List. That's a lot of hit records. Yeah. I mean, you kidding me? Yeah. So anyway, no that was some stuff, stuff from the road. There you go. There's that segment. Um, and then, yeah, so I got some Q&A here. We'll run through some of these. Um, this was from Corn Fed um, on Instagram. Hey, Jar, if I counted right, the podcast episode that came out on 9-8 was episode 102. But I looked on iTunes, and it says not, it had 92 episodes. So I don't know where we're at on that. We're going to get some clarification to find out. Uh, exactly how many episodes we're at now because huh. um, corn fed thought it was 102 and i looked <clears> on <throat> itunes or the apple thing and it said <laughs> um, maybe they don't have all of them or something he I said, mean, that, maybe he said apple that's doesn't? if you include the bonus episode with colt and the bonus episode with the mini concert so i don't know um for sure we'll get a we'll get some clarification on that then i got that picture i showed you of i guess a tour prank from brad paisley that was funny. We'll post that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had a wig on or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was from Christian Day. Uh was from the Memphis area. We've talked with him before. Morning, JR. So the wife and I have decided to move to Nashville so I can pursue music. Never thought I'd be so ecstatic to have a bunch of people tell me no. Uh, question for JM. From Ground Zero, <laughs> what are some of the things I can do to hit the ground running as a singer-songwriter? Any suggestions um, on that, Josh? I, I would say the first thing uh, would be you get hooked up with uh, one of the counters, which means go sign up with either BMI. I'm a BMI rider, and they've always done me good, but either BMI, CSAC, or ASCAP. Um, do that the first day you're there um for a lot of reasons but uh, just a couple they're responsible for 
and making certain you get paid for if you have a song do anything that earns any income at all um you know whether it's played on the radio whether it's you know played on the jukebox at waffle house whatever right but maybe as important as that especially if you don't know anybody i'm assuming you're moving there not not having uh i guess connections um but they know all the publishers and all the songwriters in town yep so you know if if you go in there with a you know some material that you can play for them or whatever assuming they'll they may not listen to it the first day you're in there but go in there make make a connection talk to whomever um they if they like what you do or whatever they can hey i think you would work well with so and so or you know if yep. they're impressed with you they may send you to a publishing company may get you may get a lead on a, a publishing deal um that would be my my advice first and you know i think chris you said you were an artist as well um to me the publishing songwriting aspect is a great way to get your foot in the door and get to know anybody and everybody uh that was how i got my foot in the door i, I got a publishing deal when i was i don't know 18 19 years old i'd been there a year maybe um but that was that was how how it kind of began for me but i don't know that would be my advice i don't know if yep. you have anything jr no that's maybe. exactly it. that's what i was gonna say yeah make sure you get <laughs> get get, your, get all that stuff going they can shoot you in the right direction and um and yeah just um uh, make the hang you ain't got to stay out all night but go hang be around well, yeah meet people go go you know if somebody's showcasing I, or something or doing something or so, so, you know writing writers rounds or open mics any of that stuff just get busy meeting people find yeah, some people go. You, yeah get you because all it you takes some, is one one person that you maybe you hit it off with at a show or a bar or whatever like jr yeah. saying and the next thing you know you might be in in a room tuesday morning writing with him or her and two or three other highly successful people yeah. or what it's just that's the way that's the way it happens in that town and uh you know i wouldn't have the energy to go try to do it again now starting off and going out and about but jr's got a great point i mean go go i mean even if it's go have a couple beers somewhere yeah at a bar or coffee I mean, or whatever yeah make yeah, some, coffee, make some yeah. allies <laughs> if you don't have, excuse if me if you don't have some from your area or hometown that are already up there yeah, and doing don't, something and don't be shy i mean talk talk yeah. to people and if I you mean, know any if you know anybody you from your area to. or know somebody who knows somebody find them and find out what they're you know just reach out because a lot of times that's what people do when they get to town you don't realize and you're like hell i know five people from the same you know part mm -hmm. of the state i'm from that or you know i got a cousin who's on i remember when i first moved there Eason, my best buddy when he moved to town he said yeah i got one cousin lives up there i think he used to play drums for joe diffie i was like oh sweet um and i you know i'm like you know i just figured it was some you know, a player played, you know, something, something. It was Lonnie Wilson, one of the biggest drummers oh, in town. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that Lonnie's was just, played on some of my stuff. Yeah. So, and Eason didn't even know. He's like, I got a cousin up here that's married to this guy, or he's married to I didn't know him. that. Yeah. And so he's like, Yeah, he came. Wow. I, I, so, when he got there, I, I told him, I was like, Yeah, you know, and he's not even in the business. I just said, Yeah, looking for jobs, looking for anything, see if you know anybody up here. That's the way you meet people. And he went and had met Lonnie at one of his. Nep or one of his i guess it would be his cousins lonnie's kids ball games or something and uh, anyway that was and then he's like yeah, i've so -and -so. never heard you and tell he told me story. the name and i'm like yeah he's not just joe's drummer he's like a world-class session drummer and stuff he's like yeah he's, he's top played guys on, ever he's played on a lot bigger <laughs> albums than mine but he's yeah. I've, he's played on a lot of my stuff yeah so but, he's amazing so, but so you just don't know that's who's why. there and you because well because when he goes back home i'm sure he mm. didn't tell everybody how much because he, he didn't want anybody wearing him out when he got home he just wanted to go to the family reunion and be just you know yeah i play a little right, bit right right so um so anyway probably so I, downplayed it to anybody he yeah, yeah yeah so i so i say that just yeah go make some contacts and that kind of stuff christian good luck buddy yeah and good yeah good luck yeah um our old buddy kc pine tar had something here he, jr I meant to send you a birthday message on sunday but i was too busy laying on the couch watching football i hope you had a great one also for a little suggestions for <laughs> jr's next album i'm going with late nights 
and long next theme, but doing the opposite, given JM's new job duties. Let's call it early mornings and mayhem. You guys be safe heading out west. Take care. <laughs> um, thanks, buddy. KC Pine Taurus, our buddy there. This was from Jordan House. He hit me up wanting to um, meet up when we were in, um, I guess it's Spokane at the Metro or Billing or uh, Billings. Uh, I've been a follower for a long time. This is my 17th JM show, and I tried to hit him up. It was too wow. late. I never got with him. But Jordan House, we'll, we'll catch up next time, Jordan. Um, yeah, man. Thank you for coming. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah, appreciate your support always. Um, somebody sent me one here. James Beck sent me one about a layout on a, a floor plan about tickets and stuff. I haven't got a chance to look into that, James, but I will and figure out what you were asking me there. Um this was uh, Ryan Brewer um, a while, uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, hey, JM and JR, can you guys give Pool Host some love on the podcast and talk about his run to 700? How about that? That and Judge, yeah. too. That's two big, two big <laughs> numbers. Yeah, we've talked about it on the radio show quite a bit. But, uh, I mean, Pool Host, man, he's just the consummate professional. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not a – a Cardinals fan, but I certainly respect that organization. They've done a a whole lot of winning over the <laughs> over oh, the years, yeah. and seem to do it the right way. Um, you know, there's a lot of Cardinals fans in Arkansas, just proximity, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I love Pujols. So I love his game. Um, the fact that he's done it for so long and uh, hell, he's 20 home runs this year again at, at what, 40, what was he, 41, 42, yeah. something, I mean, something like that. Right. Um, yeah, happy for him. I think it's really, really cool. And then you t- you, you mentioned it. I, I, I don't know that anybody ever thought <clears throat> we'd ever see 60 again. Since um, the steroid debacle deal. Yeah, but Judge has just been – I mean, it's one. He's had one of the best, one of the greatest seasons. I don't know in the last couple of decades. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just insane. I, he hasn't hit sixty yet, right? I think I he's still think one so. away. Yeah, maybe I, I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, it's really cool. It, quite honestly, as a ba- as a big baseball fan, uh, baseball needs more of these stories, right? Um, because. <clears throat> There's just, there's just not a – the popularity of the game is not what football and, and basketball and even golf and some different sports, it just, it's just not the same. Yeah. And so they, they need – and the season's so long that people – you know, it's hard for people. And the games are long. Yeah, and everybody's attention span in this world. And short. slow moving. Yeah. Yeah, and so – they need stories like this. Right. So I, I, you almost wish you could draw a couple of these up a, a year. Yeah, you know, if you're the MLB. Well, like I said, you know, the last time, <laughs> and remember how you, we were, we were, you know, we were old enough to remember. I can't remember how old we were, but when um, Sosa and uh, McGuire were going after those runs, and Bonds was hitting all them bombs in McCovey Cove. That, I mean, that was prob that was probably the most exciting. That was exciting year of baseball. Everybody was ever. watching baseball. Oh, even if you years. didn't, even if you weren't really a baseball fan, mm-hmm. or you know, you didn't play growing up, or I mean, it was still like appointment TV. Yeah, you know what I mean, because they right. were back and forth and. One would hit one, and the next one would hit two, and then it was it yeah. was awesome. It was like the big the big red headed guy and the little Jack guy, the, yeah, doing the, the the thing. And I mean, it was and, just, it was exciting. And they play and they played for rival teams, right? The Cardinals and the Cubs are rivals, right? So it'd be like the Yankees and the Red Sox having, having both you know having a I mean? yeah, yeah, or Alabama Auburn, or right. you know whatever. And so, then, yeah, it was really really cool. And then Barry Bonds, <laughs> he was just, I mean, you know, God. he was just your prototypical Man-child. baseball player there. He was it. I mean, you know, I mean, if you put him, Ken Griffey unreal. Jr., Cal Ripken Jr., Bo Jackson, I mean, you just, there's a, there's a list of like 20 of them. You're like, oh, that's a ball player. That's a baseball player. That's what, if that I was could, another, that was another great uh, storyline. Um, you remember Cal Ripken, uh, Cal Ripken yeah. breaking the, the All time games, games played streak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was big. In a, in a row. Yeah, I remember him taking the victory lap. I remember watching that yeah, on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Exactly. Good stuff. Yeah. So you're right. Though so. baseball needs that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they do. We, we were talking about fundraisers earlier. And we already talked about the floor of Bama. I'm gonna drop this on here too. Um, um, we're doing a breast cancer awareness fundraiser for Aubrey Thornton at the floor of Bama tent Saturday, October 22nd from 12 to 2 p.m. Um, if anybody's in the area, y'all come to that. I know Justin um, donated a few signed uh, items for that, and uh, they got a bunch of cool stuff there they're going to do trying to raise some money for one of the bartenders there who's fortunately got uh, diagnosed with cancer recently. So that's October 22nd um, at the Floribama. You can find that info there, too. If anybody's in the area, y'all come support that. Uh, donate uh, donate, or uh, get in on that raffle stuff. I uh, just want to mention that. I had some pictures here of uh, just looking through of our show there in California. What a What a pretty day that was. That was some – it was a wild weather there. And then that golf course you played at the next day. It was beautiful, but, again, man, it was dry. Um, it's all back in California? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. We've got uh, – it, it really was pretty, though. What's up? I got some questions possibly bring up. I know you have a ton. Um, this is – you guys have five dinner guests, dead or alive, who would you bring? Another one, who are your top five point guards? If you can sneak in a birthday shout-out, mine is on the 26th of September. So we just missed it. But Marco's, Girl Dad 112, uh, happy birthday on the 26th. Um, yeah, said, happy you, birthday a couple of days ago. He said, if you guys already did these questions, change point guards in the top five centers, LOL. So I guess we'll do the uh, mm. we'll do the sports ones first. Top five point guards all time. You're more, you're more of a point guard than I am for sure. I would say, um, for me, Magic Johnson. I mean, he changed the position. Nobody's yep. played it like him. Maybe since. I mean, I'm. I guess LeBron probably could. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I wouldn't really consider Steph a point guard. Um, Scottie Pippen is probably in there for me. Um, he played the one. Yeah, he, he brought the and he was a court. Yeah, I wouldn't consider uh, him necessarily a point guard though. He would be a small forward. I thought he played the one though. He, he brought the ball down, but he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have been in the lineup. At, as okay, the well, as, I would say uh, definitely Magic Johnson, John Stockton. Yeah, John Stockton could get the rock around. If you're talking about a I pure mean, point guard, that guy could put it on him. God, five. It didn't look like the guy who could put it on him. <laughs> like your dad's buddy, but he could put it on you. I mean, oh, you yeah. always like. Hey, hey. I mean, that the <clears throat> argument's been out lately because you know uh, they're saying who's better, Russ or Chris Paul. And I know you like Chris Paul. I would. I, li- I Chris- like Chris Paul's. I like Chris Paul's game a lot. I would might have to put him on there. Um, I, I'm not a Russell Westbrook fan. I think he's incredibly gifted as an athlete, oh, yeah. but I don't. I, I wouldn't consider him a a great point guard. Right. You would know you what I mean. Put, uh, Allen Iverson's in the consideration. Uh, See, I wouldn't consider him a point guard. I would think he's more of like a two, a two man. He was just a scoring point guard. He was a one. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm oh trying gosh, to there's think. A, there's a ton. Um, you know, I tell you who I like a lot right now. Probably my favorite player in the NBA right now. I don't know if he's top five of all time. He's not. I mean, he's not. But I really like Damian Lillard. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I like his game a lot. Um. Man, I'm trying to think of old school guys. Uh, I like Chris Paul. I like a lot. I would have Chris Paul, Magic Johnson, Stockton there for sure. Uh, top five all time. I'm trying to think back in like the nineties. We Isaiah were Thomas. Um, you know he was. Yeah, he's, he's got to be in the consideration. Um, but was it him or Dumars that played the point on that team? It was Isaiah Dumars. Would have been it was. Two. Yeah. Okay. Um. um I, t- I tell you whose game I loved. He's not top five of all time. Was Jason Williams? Um, Jason Williams, yeah. I mean, he was a bad, bad man. Jason, Jason Kidd was a solid Jason one. Kidd. Hey, Jason Kidd's probably got to be top five. Steve Nash, I would think. Steve, Steve Nash, Nash was the other guy. I was going to ask you. You think he's top five? He's he a, get, he's top ten he easily. Was, he could he could do it all. He could, <laughs> you know, um, he could pass, shoot. He won MVP a few years. Yeah. Um, um, you know, Gary Payton, if you're talking about defense, Gary Payton's yeah. got to be on there. Um, Man. I'm trying to th- – I want to get this – like now I, I know i got to be forgetting some people. Let's see. I'm going to look it up. Uh, and, yeah, 
you you do the point guards, um, and I'll go ahead and take centers. Um, for me, my favorite center of all time, and I would have to put him in the um, in the in the top five of all time, would be Hakeem Olajuwon because he just to me he. I mean, he could do it all. He was, he was just that guy, and he was around when I was watching. And I think no, I don't think anybody yeah. argue that he's at least top ten. But I would put him in my top five. Um, and I don't know if there's much difference in any of this top five that I would pull up because I'd have, you got to go with Bill Russell, uh, who unfortunately just left us a few years ago. I mean, a few uh, months ago, weeks ago, even now. But um, Bill Russell, I mean, the championships, the era, who he, I mean, he played against Wilt. <laughs> so Wilt's on there for sure. Um, and oh, then, yeah. And then um, I have to say Kareem, again, somebody who just did it for so long at that position. And then Shaq. Shaq was the most dominant center of all time, um, maybe, you know, since since Wilt. So I would probably put those five, Russell, <clears throat> Olajuwon, <throat> Wilt, Kareem, Shaq. Um, but then right there after that, you got to go, you know, there's Moses Malone, David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, uh, Willis Reed. Um, I don't think any of those would – if you switched any of those, it would um, it would hurt anybody's feelings. But that would be what I would say for centers, and I think that's pretty. Oh, I just I found one that I didn't realize. I didn't think about him being a point guard, but he's got to be up there. But li listen to the first like, listen to the first five that they have listed when you just type in top point guards of all time. Yeah, it makes me feel good about you and I. Curry, which I, I mean, I guess he is. Curry a point is the guard. one. I he just, plays the one. He shoots a lot though. Okay, so Curry, Magic Johnson, John Stockton, Chris Paul, Jason Kidd. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, that's pretty much what we said. That's probably but what I would But I didn't it. think Dwayne Wade. D. Wade? Yeah, he, he, he was more of a two, though, but I guess he did run the one. Another one that I thought was really good, I forgot about a couple, and then we'll move on, but uh, Tim Hardaway. Tim totally Hardaway. forgot about him. Well, and if you want to go old school, which no, a lot of people won't remember because there's not as much <clears> footage, and it was right before the heyday of this, was Pistol Pete Maravich. I thought about him too. Pistol yeah. Pete. Hey, I tell you, I somebody mean, who's still playing right now, and he's <coughs> been top probably five all time because his career is kind of um, some years here and there for whatever reasons. Um, but Chris Jackson, aka Mac, uh, Mac Mood, oh, yeah. Bill Rauf, played at yeah. uh, played at LSU, and then went and played in the league. That guy could play. He still plays now on one like the Big Three league mm. and crushes people. Him and Catino Mobley, they're yeah. still crushing people. Penny um, Hardaway, Penny. He was one of my favorites growing up. Penny was good. Um, then I I didn't think about uh uh. They've got Kobe on here. I don't I don't. Remember him playing like the three, two, three. That's what I thought, yeah. But um, that was all the ones kind of that I right. thought kind of stood out to me. But the the dude at uh, with the Mavericks right now, I mean, he's got a chance to be uh, uh, Luka Donick. Yeah, good night. Yeah, that he, Joker. He plays a lot of the one. I guess he's more of a two, three guy too. But he plays like he can See, do it I all. Thought he, every time guy. I've seen it, he's he's running the one. He kind of reminds you of Magic a little <sighs> bit because he's kind of bigger guy. A little bit, and, and he looks effortless, man. Yeah. I mean, he's he looks like, like he's playing either. in slow. He looks like he's playing in slow motion. Yeah, he jumps he, about that high. He can feel. I it mean, up. it looks like, but mm. I mean, he's getting it done now. Oh yeah. Uh, but, the other question Marcos had was. Uh, you guys have five dinner guests, alive or dead. Who would you bring? That's tough. For me, I just because I was thinking about this yesterday, I'd bring my granddad. <laughs> I know that's, I mean, not famous yeah. people, but uh, I'd love to just <laughs> check out my granddad again. One well, time. that's that's. I was gonna say I could say four of them would be my grandparents. Right, because they're yeah, all three gone. Of my grandparents, but for sure. I'll I'll answer that a little. Di it definitely would be that. Uh, but I'll right. just for but the if you're talking sake about of answering the question, type people. Um, to me, it would be Waylon, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, mm, Abe Lincoln. Because I find him incredibly interesting, mm -hmm. and I've read a lot about the Civil War and uh, dang, 
Five is a lot. It's yeah, tough. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say yeah. kind of on that. I would have to say yeah. I would. Uh, we talked about men, but Hakeem Olajuwon. Mm-hmm. I'd love to have dinner with my favorite NBA player of all time. Um, uh, Elvis. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, if I could have dinner with Elvis, that'd be cool. And yeah, Waylon would be. That would. Hank Senior would be. I mean, you yeah. could, we can make a we can make a list of about thirty yeah. country artists a lot or artists a lot. Yeah. But yeah, outside of music though, yeah, I'd love like Jackie Gleason. I would love to have dinner oh, with Jackie yeah, that'd Gleason. Be fun. Um, um, JFK. I mean, imagine if having I, dinner with JFK. I was thinking JFK. If I were single, uh, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> she was pretty strong. Yeah, we get another list going on that. But uh, but that's it. Yeah, yeah, we can go for days. Um, let's see. Next one I had here. Uh, this was from Michelle Lucas um, on Twitter. Uh, asked, how do you decide where concerts are held or where the tour will cover? Um, I'd have to say a lot of that's done with just uh, promoters and routing and stuff. We try to cover yeah. all 50 states as much as we can. We just try to get to every area, and a lot of times there's clauses where you can only play within so hundred mi- so many hundred miles of each other. So, um, you Yeah, know. A lo- uh, quite honestly um, – the promoters have a lot to do with that, as as Jr. said. Uh, we really don't have a lot to do with it. I mean, I we can say, hey, we definitely want to go play this area, or but we we really don't have a lot to do with it um, as artists and really management. I mean, we really don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. People um, offer shows, and we decide whether we want to go there or not. Basically. Yeah. What, what um, but a, a lot of it, and... a lot of us determined also by our uh, booking agents Mm -hmm. working with the promoters but (laughs) i'm trying to think of how to put this in layman's terms with what jr said about routing and there's what's called radius clauses which means we can't play we can't play in you know in your city tonight and then tomorrow night play 30 miles down the road right like it's against the rules if you will, um, whose rules I won't get into. Well, all they, that, yeah, but, well, they kind of do that so everybody won't come to one and not the other, so it gives everybody right. a chance to fill up the buildings, you know. Yeah, and, and but where I was going with that, a lot of us determine too because uh, or by who else is also playing in the market, and ha- you know, so these booking agents and promoters all work together, you know, so that. We're not playing here tonight and 10 miles down the road, Jason Aldean's playing. Right. So, so a lot of it's when when we go different places is determined by who gets their shows in first. I mean, it's yeah, it's a, it's a really it. boring kind of. Yeah, but, but we a, don't we don't. There's a method and, to the there's a method to the madness, but we we leave that up to promoters and booking agents. Right. And just know that they're doing the job the way it should be done and they're working with everybody else's booking agents and promoters as well to make right. sure all these things are happening the way they they should right. i hope that answers your question uh i saw on here uh kurt Berdella uh posted never imagine when i started the morning hangover i'd end up on the podcast one of my absolute personal favorites justin moore uh get the backstory of my country music journey how we all became buds yep so just want to shout out to kurt in the morning hangover was our guest a few shows ago we'll see him this weekend we'll see him this weekend yeah yep um he's got a good looking shot he sent us a video i still don't know that he's gonna whip us but he's got a good looking stroke (laughs) this is from steve proctor and he said, enjoyed the podcast. I have been listening to JM since Small Town USA. My wife and I listen to him every time we ride the motorcycle. <laughs> Hate lot. Nice. Uh, hate late nights and straight out of the country didn't get released on vinyl but we're looking forward to jm coming back close to south carolina saw him in georgia with heath sanders told my wife for her 50th birthday in november i would hire jam to perform if i won the lottery well that didn't happen I tell him i'll send him 100 bucks to do a video to tell her happy birthday lol uh saw where his daughters play softball we have friends whose daughters play for Furman, and she's awesome um look forward to new music another concert soon keep up the podcast uh, we'll so be in South did, Carolina soon, won't we? Yeah, actually, next weekend we're in uh, Ridgeland, South Carolina thing there at the um, Air Force base. or military base. Yeah, I don't know if it's Air Force. So he didn't. Steve didn't say his wife's name, but uh, send us something and tell us your wife's name, and Justin will give her a um, 
happy birthday on here uh in november i don't you didn't tell me date yeah. you said in november um and i wouldn't be telling her how many she is i ain't gonna say it on here because um I ain't going to get me or you in trouble. We'll try not to. We'll just say happy birthday. But, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, Steve. Um, let's see. Uh, this, uh, Jay, this is from uh, uh, Brent Bellman. says, uh, hope you're having a good week. <coughs> pass on a message, J.M. I hope he's crying. Hope he has his crying towel tonight's game. Let's go Browns. Did y'all win? How that game ended? I can't remember. The Browns beat us. They did. Well, uh, we have not played well this year on offense. We our defense has been pretty good, but our offense has been really just non-existent, to be honest with you. So yeah, we're we're one and two. Yeah, the Saints but, the same. I mean, well, let's pass week the turnovers. <laughs> Man, I don't know what we're gonna do. I just sent you a text. This was just something random. We talked about this how. My buddy Davey, shout out to the dude man, Davey, and I used to always talk about how when we watch in videos and you see somebody back in the day, and it would be when they were young, you know, Golly. The 70s, and we'd say, oh, my God. That person was, you know, the person looks like our granddad. And you're like, how old do you think they were in that video? <laughs> they were like 26. And you're like, you look it up. And you're like, yeah, they were 27 at that point. And they look old. People just looked old back then. I sent just one. It was. Uh, from Dad Wilder, which is funny on Instagram, he says I need to go for a walk because it shows the age of everybody on the show. Oh, Cheers when my. we were growing up, and what it's their age the, uh, when they were actually that it, when the show was oh, out I, in the eighties. I love Cheers. Uh, what was the uh, the dude all the way to the left? Norm, uh, the mailman. Or, um, um, it was wasn't Norm. he a mailman? Yeah, he was the mailman. Um, Thirty five. He looks sixty five. Yeah, I mean the guy uh, who looks fifty eight. Looks a little older than 58. No, Ted, the guy that is 58 looks 78. Yeah, and Ted Danson is 35 there, Just. I mean, isn't that and crazy? Norm, Norm looks... <laughs> isn't that crazy? I mean, I don't... 50 at the least. Just the, I guess it's just the outfits, the way people wore their hair. So people, it's just weird out in videos. <laughs> yeah, people look... And, and you look man. at stars now. You look at... You look at somebody who was around wow. back then. They look that's younger now than they did that's back so then. That's so funny because you and I do talk about that I a know. lot. We're like, yeah. oh, I bet he's – who was it the other day we were talking about? Uh, George Jones. Yeah. We were watching the George Jones thing, and we were like, oh, he's probably, I don't know, 70 there or whatever. He was like 48 or something. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> Um, this is for our Marty Party Chad Mar Chad Martin sent in. JR, I'm getting close. I got the Pearl Snap shirt and the mutton chops growing. Uh, what you think? He sent me a picture of him in his hat and his Pearl Snap. You getting there, Marty Party? We'll see you soon on the nice. road, buddy. Stay out of trouble. Look, see, you're influencing people. I know, right, Marty? You didn't even realize it. And you and I got a vi couple videos of you and Jake on stage <laughs> the other night. That was fun. Um, yeah, he came one night. The second night, Jake came out and is like. It was still in his Wranglers, but his tennis and a shoes. shirt four or five, four or five sizes too small, and like some old Asics from like the eighties or something. <laughs> he, they were something. getting ready to leave, and you're like, something Get like here. that. Yeah. All right. Um, I got this Fun. from Bill Haynes. Sent great show last night, y'all. The opening, uh, the opening fellow, awesome. Also, that was Jake. I hate it was so cold, yeah, but I'm sure glad pu Justin pulled through. <sighs> Caught this picture where you can even see his breath. Safe travels, y'all. He sent a picture where you're singing. You got to see your breath. Uh, but oh, that yeah. would have been in. Um, that that was probably we've, we've played a. We might have been. We might have played. I don't know. In my entire time on the road, we might have played a, a couple, and I mean literally two or three shows as cold as it was that that those couple yeah. nights i mean maybe yeah i mean when we weren't it, ready it for was it that too, it was hot it was that it was that cold mm -hmm. yeah we didn't get to eat <laughs> into it too we just went from hot to cold uh got yeah. one here from marshall Sargent uh saying fantastic show last night uh so glad to have been there that would have been um elmira so thanks to elmira him. Uh, this was a guy, this was Greg Neiman. That was Doc Neiman sent in. Um, uh, he said, how was Jake live? Randall King turned me on to him. Uh, did it drop below 80? I see JM has a jacket on, LOL. Yeah, it was cold, brother. <laughs> it's cold, uh, cold. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Oh, and also saw where, uh, just gonna, me and you can talk about that later, about your, um, your family social media um, findings. Oh, uh, yeah. 
This is from Renee Harvey, longtime listener. She sent in, hey, JR, I was rewatching part of episode 23 from season three yesterday, and it was the part where you and Justin were talking about how you were planning on doing a lot of your podcast remotely, like from concerts and backstage and things like that. Also, you're planning to possibly have some band and crew members, um, an artist you're doing shows with as guests. You're saying you now have all the equipment to do some behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, I know this season you said it's a lot easier doing episodes from your offices at home, but I was wondering if there's still any chance some of that remote stuff. I was truly looking forward to that. thought it would be really cool to see behind-the-scenes stuff. Anyway, I do love your podcast no matter what. Uh, but more stuff remote would be cool too. Thanks, thanks, Renee. Yeah, we talked about that this year. Is just we <laughs> kind of talking about it earlier, and excuse me. This year has just gotten crazy on us. We we have we do have the stuff on the buzz, and we will be doing more of that going forward. But um, we were just so bang bang in and out this year. We didn't have time to do nothing. It seemed like, you know. Yeah, we we have done some, but like it seems like every time we try, uh, was it Renee? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um. It seemed like every time we went to do it, something derailed it. Um, mm -hmm. Whether, you know, whoever we were on the road with that day uh, didn't get there till late, or yeah. oh, we couldn't get one day we, we or one day we were going to do it when we were near Yellowstone. Was it Yellowstone? Yeah. Uh, and it flooded and and a flood happened um it was just, it was weird it was like but um I, we'll, I promise you we'll make a, a concerted effort to do that uh in the future yeah um, and we're gonna bring some of the bandy it, crew people on dear uh, and we definitely you can go back and listen we've done a number of the band and crew uh probably first couple seasons first season uh so if you want to go back and you can probably go find some of that. Um, yeah. But but we'll do some more of that too. Yeah, and I want to. We're going in the off season. We're going to get a, we're going to get episodes in as we start winding down on the road. We'll be able to get these in and um, get more creative with that. I want to bring on Stefan, our new guitar player, and Tucker. Yeah, and, maybe we can do those on the road. And we'll we'll just we'll zoom so. them at home, and that'll be fun. You can see how 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 they're working <laughs> at their home offices or even on the studios. road. Those would be really easy. We'll just yeah. make them do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Stefan would love it. Uh, so happy to be here. I love America. Um, <laughs> Zach Briscoe put in the new album could be called Arkansas Home. That's a good one, but maybe the next one. Yep. Um, got one here. Hey, JM and JR, one of my favorite songs is for some old redneck reason. Can you tell the story about what inspired it and how you got Charlie to sing with you? Saw you in Toledo and you absolutely killed it. Best show I've ever seen. We talked about that uh, before, how that came about. You know, Justin had the song in mind for Charlie and uh, when he texted him about it, man, Charlie was just that kind of guy. He was all over it. He couldn't wait. Um, and it came yeah, about, um, and we got to do it a few times. It was really cool. Yeah, it was It was um, a really cool part of that story. Uh, we wrote that song, and the, the last verse, I could, like, hear him singing it in my head even before I talked to him about it recording the song with us um so we reached out and i don't remember if i texted him or saw him at a show or i think i, I think i saw him at a show I said hey i got this song i think um that's what i'm gonna go with I, I think that's what happened we were at a show together and i said i got this song uh that man i really would love to have you sing the the last verse of um it's called for some old redneck reason and he goes i don't even need to hear it with that title yeah and i thought you texted him and he texted you back something like that and then said just let me know where you need me buddy yeah something to that but maybe effect. i'm mixing that up with it was doing yeah. something with him or something i thought i thought initially we talked in person but anyway yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i think the second part of the story is what you're talking about jr okay. so so like the week he's planning to come into the studio and and sing on it he ha he goes into the hospital and has like heart surgery or something like that and i thought oh man so i text him i was like hey you know so sorry to hear hope you're doing well recovering don't worry about this song or whatever and um and he 
that's when he texts back. He goes, "You just tell me where and when to be that's there." That's what it was. That's what was. I'll be there, and, buddy. You and, just tell me. I where mean, where like, to be. I mean, it was like I don't know, two days after he had surgery right. or something. I mean, right. like open heart surgery or something yeah. to that effect. It was something serious. Yeah. And not only did he sing on it, but he played fiddle on it. So it was it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, got this from Rhett Fisher. Uh, man, what a coincidence. Had to do some work in Sheridan coming back through Poen to the house and ran into Justin at Tills or whatever they call the gas station now while yeah. in the process of listening. Yeah. While I'm listening to this week's podcast. Oh, no kidding. I didn't realize. I do remember talking to him, but. That's funny. I, he's like, Justin? I go, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, this is from a few weeks back, but this was. I didn't uh, know he was listening to the podcast. Uh, this is from Brett Billman again. Congrats on the number one. Thank oh, you. Let's see what I got here. Man, I don't know if we want to go down this hole. Hold on. I got to find a way to open this, JR. Gotcha. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at bobcat.com. Or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic benton arkansas Uh, again that's 119 west south street in benton arkansas and if you're not local we ship everywhere so uh you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer all that my wife kate has to offer i should say facebook you can find us at shop this little piggy ar and instagram you can find us at shop this little piggy ar but check us out it's called this little piggy and uh See what we got to offer. Shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit easyliquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. I get mine at Academy. So, if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. Well, I might do this last one here in a minute, but until then, I want to say thanks to everybody for listening. As always, uh, you can go on Instagram to the Justin Moore podcast page and get all the updates and follow us and uh, all that stuff there. Uh, remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast when you're interacting with us on social media or anything like that. 
Uh, mine's J- at JR the Handler. That's at Justin Cole Moore. Um, Justin's got the blue check marks. Nobody's going to side text you asking you for anything. We don't have side accounts, nothing like that. So don't be fooled. That's just so crazy this still happens. But yeah, nobody's, don't get duped out there, people. If it feels like a scam, it's a scam. Don't give anybody any personal information. Don't give no numbers, nothing like that. But, uh, but do listen to the person, do listen to the Justin Moore podcast and tell all your friends and family. And if you're around somebody, um, um, this year and you got their phone just go on the little purple podcast thing put Justin Moore podcast go ahead and click it and uh, download it and subscribe to it on their phone too that way they won't miss an episode they don't even know what they're missing yet but um, but remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast send us in questions comments all that fun stuff uh, justinmoremusic.com is the hub for all things Justin Moore you can find concert dates tickets uh, album stuff you can buy merchandise uh, videos uh, the links to the podcast the any anything Justin's got going on we, we put it through the um, through the website so y'all make sure to check that out and uh, if you don't do social media and you want to just email me a question or something you can go to jrthehandler.com and my little message board there and I'll, I'll look at those too. I'll get those on next uh, week's episode. Um, but yeah, just well, we'll just to add, yeah, go ahead. Just to add on to the, that, since you're kind of doing the do's and don'ts and the cautionary things, um, <clears throat> one of the shows uh, this past week, I forget which one, uh, doesn't matter. Um, but we've told you guys a lot. Uh, yeah, hey, don't do this or do this or whatever for shows. Um, one of which is holding a sign up the entire show. Will you sign this or whatever? Yeah, that's a good point. I feel when bad I for the it, little kid the other day, and I tried yes, to tell his dad yes. we'll get to it later, but then they were mad. But he literally was the from the first song on holding a sign. I want to get on stage, and I'm like, we'll we'll try. Oh, I didn't to work realize they got. I didn't realize they got mad. Well, I don't know if he got mad, but I looked later trying to go get him, and I didn't see the dad or the kid or the sign, and I, I told yeah, the dad, so, and I was like, from the beginning of the show on, I mean, we're not going to stop the very beginning of the show and do that. It's just we got to get. Yeah, so what I try to, so a lot of people hold up a sign and say, hey, you know, whatever, it's the first show or 10th show or I just got married or whatever it is, will you sign this? And I try my best to acknowledge these people or you guys out there who may do this. There's nothing wrong with doing this, by the way. I'm just trying to help you out. And try yeah, to they asked me you, about signs. And like, I say, this yeah, is the way that I, this is the way I, I handle it. Okay. And this right. is not going to change next week or next year or 10 years from now. I try my best to make eye contact with whomever's holding the sign and mouth I will I will do it later. Yes. Before right. I am done, I will sign your sign. I don't want anybody leaving without me signing it. I mean, I, okay, so what happens is at the very end, we're going to play our show, and then at the very end of the show, JR will go out and grab stuff for me to sign before I leave the stage. We do it every night. And, you know, we may do it for 10 minutes. We may do it for a half hour. I, it just depends on kind of, you know, if we got to go, we got to get off stage because of curfew, whatever. That kind of determines how long we do it or how long we've played or whatever. But if I tell you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Like, I, I keep it in my mind. I, I remember the the people and where they are and you know what I mean? Like I keep kind yeah. of a running tab and know, okay, right. I got to get that, that I'll even tell you, Hey, we got to go get this so-and-so's Kids ball thing. cap yeah. or, you right. know, so we play the other night and I mean, from the very beginning of the show, it's, it's, it's a, there's a dad, I don't know, my, maybe my age <laughs> directly in front of me and his son's on his shoulders, cute little boy, probably I don't know, five, six, yeah. uh, maybe. But the little boy's holding the sign up above his head. The whole, I mean, the first, I don't know, four or five songs. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and I'm like, I so I tell JR, I'm like, you got to go tell them 
And I had already. I don't, want, I don't want this little. I don't want this little boy holding a sign up over his head for two hours. And the dad's my, holding him for, like for, this. For the, and I mean, I don't mean it for me. I mean it for them. Like yeah. Well, like, and the people tell behind them, them hey, too. Yeah, tell them hey, I'll get to it. But don't make him hold that sign up for two hours. So and even, I don't want you having to hold him on your shoulders for two hours. Right. And before you, know what I mean? you even not before to you mention, had told me that, I, I had already mentioned to him once. And he, yeah, not to mention for me, you know, I, look, I love the people on the front row, but I love the people on the back row too. Right. And so it's incredibly distracting. It really yeah. is. Like, you know, that's my job. It's whatever. But – it was just right there in front of me. And this particular sign, this is another point I wanted to make. And I certainly hope this is not coming across as hateful because I'm I'm just saying it because I I want to help you guys have the best experience exactly. you can have. Exactly. And I don't want your damn arms tired. I don't want right. you waking up the next morning going, golly, man, I'm sore as shit. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Like, um, and I want you to relax and chill and have fun. Um so I hope I hope this comes across the right way is my point, but this this sign in particular was trying to get me to get the little boy up on stage. Right. Look, I there ain't nobody that loves kids more than I do. I love them. Got twenty. I, of them. That's that's why I got a bunch of them. All right. But I'm not ever gonna pull your kid up on stage with me, but because I I won't that child to be as safe as possible and if i don't i wouldn't mind babysitting the little boy right. during the day okay i'd probably have fun with him but when i get up on stage i'm singularly focused on putting on the best show that i can put on right and so have we done stuff like in the past i mean there have been maybe fluke instances but I just don't like the idea of me pulling somebody's child up on stage and because at that point I become responsible yep. for that child. Not that I can't be or don't like being responsible for children. That's why I coach and that's why I have kids, but not in that setting. I don't feel comfortable with it. So that's yeah, not meant to slip be rude. And fall, I mean, who knows? We talk about we've talked about it in the past, I think, on here, JR, but it it doesn't seem it, but a stage can be a dangerous place. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've I've fell off and broken ribs. Jr. fell off the week he started with me, and damn near impaled himself. Yep. If you yep. remember, oh, like, yeah. oh, it's yeah. just I, I don't feel comfortable with that, and that's not meant to be rude in any way, shape, or form. Because again, I I love kids. Jr. and I both love kids. Everybody in our band, yeah, uh, oh, and yeah. crew. But I don't. And feel I was going to get the kid that. to stay inside and so, stage with the dad at some point. Or yeah, something. now that's one thing. The Jr. maybe brings them to the side or whatever. But I don't know. I just wanted to touch on that because the other thing is I don't want a couple things. I don't want the dad to be pumping his kid up, saying, "Oh, I bet we can get you on stage." And then the dad look bad when he don't make it happen. And then the kid be mad at me right. from the time he's six years old up. It's just not a great idea. Yeah. And I, th th there's nothing wrong with making that sign or holding it up. I'm not telling you that. I'm just telling you it's not going to happen Yeah. For, for the reasons that I've laid out. And if I acknowledge you and I make eye contact and I tell you I will sign your sign, I promise you I will. I've right. never left and gone, oh, man, I didn't get to so-and-so. Like I, I, That's something that means a lot to me. Because I know it means a lot to people. If you're bringing a sign and you want it signed, and I tell you I will, I, I'm not going to lie to you. So yeah. anyway, I just wanted to I yeah. wanted to touch on that. Yeah, and a lot of times I'll go get the signs if I see somebody that's holding. I'll go get it early in the show and just put it on the drum riser because I'm <sighs> like, I don't want you holding this thing. We'll get to it if I see it. But I'm busy yeah. a lot of times during the show too. I'm working on numbers and settlement or you know coordinating mm -hmm. other stuff we've got to get going. So I can't be there all the time. So, if, but like Justin says, if he acknowledges, we'll get to it because he'll radio me or I'll see you. And Nathan one, we'll make sure to get your stuff signed if mm. you're within arms. You know if you're close enough. But for the little boy, I had went and talked to the dad. I said, hey. We'll get to it. We'll see if there's a spot in the show, but no need in holding him up. And he's like, okay, okay. I'm like, I'm just, just, it'd be better because everybody behind you. Because the sign he had also, too, was a bottom of a beer box. 
so it was, oh, it was okay. big yeah, and square I didn't and didn't roll up and see I, we have the opportunity to not even let that it, you know at security meetings every day at these buildings they ask me you know you letting signs in i'm like we're good with signs and what i always say is as long as they're not messing anybody else up it's a huge sign and they hold up the whole time everybody 20 rows behind them is getting an obstructed view now and that's just not fair yeah if it's if it's a song i mean put it up and down but just the whole time yeah you're you're not you know that's almost to me like people with the phone the whole time it's like just watch the show uh, and, and the other thing and the other thing it's but we could cut just it a, all out well all, just imagine could, but we, we like to it. just just imagine too i told you a few a few weeks ago on here hell i can't even see no more right uh so just put yourself in my place <laughs> like yeah you're up on stage in front of thousands of people. You're trying to remember the words to like 20 different songs. And at the same time, try not to walk off the stage and, and break your neck and try to read a sign. I mean, right. it's like. With the lights can, flashing and flickering. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's, it, yeah. you know, but. But yeah. what? But, but, like said, but we'll again, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be. I certainly hope this doesn't come across as rude because I, I don't mean it that way at all. I'm just. I'm trying to help you guys have the best experience you can because you pay your hard-earned money to come see us play, and I want you to enjoy the heck out of it as as much as you possibly can. So, and I I can't I don't want to do this holding the sign up. I don't want to do that for a minute, much less two hours. And it's and again, just to reiterate on the kids up on stage, it's nothing personal. It's just. I, I I don't. It's a liability. It it really just is, and right. I, I don't want to. If God forbid, a, a anybody, but in particular a kid comes up there and gets hurt, uh, trips on a on a cable or something, and skins her knee, busts her nose, falls Any off of the stage. God forbid. Or even if I'm trying to hand them back, and the mom or the dad or the uncle or the brother or whoever, they don't. We don't have a good. A yeah. handoff or it's just it, it it's it to me it's not worth it right well and so. not to mention that one night and i mentioned that to the dad um you were a little under the weather you'd been sick the day before not yeah, I, I was sick, sick but you were snotty and stuff and it was like oh, you don't want the kid you know yeah. just trust us we'll you know so i i, I hope yeah. they, hope they didn't take it wrong because we Plus, I, like I, said, I, I, I looked for him and i was going to bring him side stage to stand while he got the sign thing you give him a pick or something but uh, then I didn't see them, so but we we're we're good about getting stuff signed. And I, nowadays I throw sure. stuff off the stage. Brett comes behind <laughs> us and gets all the set lists and passes them out to people. And we throw yeah. hell every basically by the time we leave the stage, anything we could give out, we throw it out to whoever's. I mean, we just throw yeah. shit off the stage. So there's a good chance you can get a little token of the show that way. Yeah, especially the, kids. Like I, I always try to, you know, I throw a pick out. Yeah, every song that I play right. guitar on, and. If anybody out there, I don't know if you've noticed or you haven't, but I try to give them to all the kids I can find before I give them to any grown-ups. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I, yeah. I just wanted to touch on that because that, that was a new one that we haven't really talked about. And I felt bad because, I, I, again, I didn't want the kid being upset with, with Dad because he didn't make good on a, a prom, a, maybe a promise. And then I don't want the kid upset with me or dad upset with me. I just, but that's why. Um, last one I got here, and then I'll do, uh, we'll do a quick music thing here. But um, last one I got here is from Kevin Martin on Twitter. Um, he says, JR and JM, with college football season underway, what are your predictions on win loss records for Alabama and Auburn? <laughs> or Alabama and Arkansas, excuse me. I can't believe I said that. I, I had Arkansas going 10 and 2. Um, before the season, I thought we would beat A and M, which I don't. <laughs> I hate to even get into. We we completely outplayed them, outgained them, out everything them except uh, we turned the ball over and had some stupid mistakes, and and they slipped up and somehow beat us, even though we really outplayed them for most of the game. Uh, I had that as a win, as my point, and I had us losing to Alabama and. I think BYU maybe um, or Mississippi State. I forget, uh, but I would maybe go nine and three for us now. Maybe. 
Unless we can pull an upset, unless we can pull the upset this weekend, then I would stick with ten and two, probably. Um. Yep. I you know I hate even doing that because I don't, I hate I I feel like I have the worst mojo ever if I ever get try to enjoy anything or uh, you got to do it got to do it yeah, well uh, I mean I started the season say why well, do it now I mean I, I, anything less than undefeated in the national championship is really going to be a letdown for the University of Alabama I'm just going to put that out there but then I I'll say this um, Georgia was really good last year and they put it on us and they're really good again this year. Uh, Ohio State looks really good, but they they a lot of times do. Hopefully they'll do what they. I don't know if they'll play enough defense. Uh, and that's what I'm hoping. But uh, but there's I, several teams out there, and hell, we got to play y'all coming off a, a one. I know y'all want back, so y'all will be ready to play this week. I, I know, will say this: uh, y'all always play us tough. And, I, if we get through I'm this weekend, it, I'm, not it's a, I'm not saying it because it's. I'm not saying it because it's us. Because you know me, I'm brutally honest, and if we suck, I'd say we we suck. We were the best. If we play A and M ten times, we probably beat them seven, eight times this right. year. I mean, we were the better team. We just we we just gave it to them. I mean, right. we did. Uh, um, I I think we're y'all's most difficult game until a potential SEC championship game with Georgia. I really do. Yeah, I mean, I and I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. Yeah, that's true. So hopefully everybody so. gets out like we talk about. <clears throat> hopefully everybody gets through this weekend um, healthy and everybody can continue their college careers and season um, healthy. And, and I love you, but damn, time. y'all beat a sixteen year straight. Can we have one? Can we just have one? Just one. If I if I give you this one, <laughs> I would give you this one if you could guarantee me we could get Georgia <laughs> in the SEC championship. I'm before, fine with that. The, but but look, no way. look, the I'm fine with that. Look, y'all, or, y'all, y'all. I wish y'all y'all lose Georgia. to us. I'm, yeah. I'm thankful we don't. Um, uh, but we had them the last two years. Um, but yeah, look, we y'all give us this one. We'll go ten and two. Y'all go eleven and one, beat Georgia in the SEC championship, and then go win it all. I'm fine with that. I would take that if we could, if we could, if we could make that happen. You'll get a kick it. out of this while we're talking about this. Kate sent me this while ago. They got these shirts at the store in like today or something. Uh, you guys won't be able to read this, but um, can you read that? Oh, I love it. Not today, Saban. It says not today, Saban. Yeah, that's it. how you know you have a, a great coach when it's not even, hey, beat. It's a T-shirt for those out there uh, who can't see or are or, or just listening. Um, it's a T-shirt that my wife has at her store uh, for this week. This is not, not today, Saban. That's how you know when it's not like beat Bama, but it's about the coach. <laughs> you, yeah. That's when you know you got a, <laughs> a legend. Juggernaut. So, I saw the ones uh, but, that the kids had on the other weekend. The uh, Pittman for president. I like yeah, those. we we've got those too. So if there's any Razorback fans out there listening, I mean, I, inevitably, I'm sure there are some. If you're going to the game this weekend, or you just want some some swag, there we've got all kinds of stuff at this little piggy and uh, Soco for grown ups and kids. Um, but there's yeah, Pittman for president t-shirts and. Uh, there's all kinds of Razorback stuff. Not today, saving. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Good stuff. Um, just some other stuff here. I was just remembering. I need to send some stuff. A couple people wanted a few little things. Um, but yeah, that was it. So yeah, it should be a good weekend this uh, this weekend. I was just actually texting with Zach Hawker, um, former Razorback and New Orleans Saints. I uh, wish we'd have had kicker. him kicking last week. I know your kicker's good uh, though. It's just a no. He's I mean, really good. Two, an yeah, inch, he's really really an good. An inch, yeah. In it's it's a field goal, but uh, mm. he's going to be there this weekend. So I'll see everybody up on the hill in Fayetteville Friday yep. night. Y'all stay out of trouble. Stay safe. Thanks for tuning in the Justin Moore podcast this week. We'll be back next week with a new episode. With um, I mean, I, I just can't wait to talk to this guest. I'm gonna do. Some, I'm gonna have to do some research. I mean, I know her, but uh, she's done I, a lot. I, I, we we could. Uh, we could go ahead and announce it, but I think I'd rather just keep it a, a surprise for, yeah. for everybody. Yeah, we'll keep it it's, a surprise. Uh, not, not an artist. No, it's a – it's a, I don't know we've ever had a, anybody in this line of work. I don't think so. I'm doubtful at this level for sure. Then, yeah. 
arguably, arguably now, the most famous person we've had on this podcast, and that includes Matthew McConaughey, Mm -hmm. arguably, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, would have to, yeah, in certain circles for sure. We'll leave you, we'll, we'll dangle that little carrot yeah in front of you there yeah uh, but but yeah looking forward to looking forward to having her on she's really cool she's about our about my age i think she is my age um but uh, should be fun to talk to for sure smarter than both of us put together times 10 oh yeah no doubt um, about it but yeah well thanks everybody for tuning in this week we'll be back next week come see us at a show uh next week uh we're going to corinth mississippi on the 7th ridgeland south carolina on the 8th then we're heading out west again doing las vegas on the 13th cedar city utah the 14th uh, I think we got a private show in Denver on the 15th for um, Volunteers of America, which will be cool. Uh, mm. And then the 29th or the 24th, we're going to be in Mexico. As we've mentioned before, we don't have tickets to the Mexico show. You have to be staying at the resort to come to that show. Uh, then on the 29th, we're going to be uh, in Newkirk, Oklahoma, uh, at the casino there. Uh, looking forward to that one. Then November 5th, we're in Lubbock, <coughs> Texas. November 6th, Midland, Texas. Um then November 11th, Chipsawanee, Indiana. Charleston, West Virginia on the 12th. That's going to wrap up our year. So uh, come to a show. Come see us. Go to justinmoremusic.com. You can check out uh, all those dates and uh, ticket information. And speaking of the Mexico thing, we really haven't talked a whole lot about that. As JR said, you got um, you got to be staying there to go to the show. I mean, I've got friends going with me that I, I couldn't even get tickets for. So – that's not on us. It's a kind of a different deal. But where I'm going with that is, um, hey, if you guys have some extra cash laying around and you need to get away, like my wife and I need a vacation from our – we've not been on vacation without our kids in years. Uh, maybe an early Christmas present. Y'all – Come hang out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun, for sure. It's one show. We'll we'll be there like a week, but only one show, so we'll absolutely blow it out uh, for that show. And I don't know, be a cool, cool setting. And ay 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 ay. You guys, yeah, you got some extra cash laying around. You want to get away for the weekend? Come come hang with us in in Mexico. Yep, I've heard they've uh, actually uh, eased up all the immigration stuff going down there now. It used to be kind of a headache to say it's a lot easier for uh, American tourists to get in and out of Mexico. Now. And I am going to get to go because I got my passport in. It was there touch go. and go there for a little bit. Yep. Uh, got to stay legal. Got to keep it legal. Yep. Legal beagles over here. We try to play it by the so, rules. That's so crazy. I was such a quote-unquote outlaw all my life and i feel like by the time i'm real old i'm gonna be just the squarest dude there ever was <laughs> you, you're pretty close now i'm getting there you're right pretty, yeah yeah oh man it's crazy some people go the opposite that's the way i'm going but anyway yeah. well thank y'all for listening and we'll see y'all at a show soon remember to go to justmoremusic.com and check out those dates and get some tickets and all that fun stuff and uh listen out yeah. for the new album when, or the new single when it comes out I need y'all's help getting that up to number one soon as it drops i'm sure fired up about it and um yeah, yeah. next week's podcast uh we'll talk about the album talk about the new single it's a duet we'll talk about who it's with and big big guest so yep. thanks for hanging out with us today and before i get out of here today when you're listening to this tomorrow as we're recording it um it's mine and my wife's 15th wedding anniversary Oh, so congrats, happy man. anniversary to, to Kate. So awesome. That's it. All right, guys. We'll see y'all next week. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to uh, use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast and tell all your friends about us. Like, click, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks to all our sponsors um, for always taking care of us. Well, oh, before I forget, Boots and Whiskey. Shout out Boots and Whiskey Podcast. Sending me this cool whiskey glass. I'm going to use that sucker tonight. Uh, he said he's got one on the way for you. So anyway, we'll see y'all next week cool. here on the Justin Moore Podcast. Thanks, y'all. Cheers. Thanks, guys. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 54, Work and Leisure. By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day 
from all his work, which he had done. Genesis 2.2 If even the creator of all things rested from his work, surely we mortals should rest from ours. There was a time in my life when I did not grasp the importance of downtime. This is a period we set aside to get away from it all, away from your work, your problems, your anxieties, and all the things in your life that keep you from truly relaxing. So many times, even when we take time away, we go on vacation that require stress over plane and hotel reservations, arriving on time, and hustling to make sure we fit everything we've planned to do. We go home leery-eyed, stressed out, bone-tired, and wondering why we spent all that money just to wear ourselves out. I love my profession, so leaving it behind, even for a few days, is extremely hard for me. My working schedule is such that it takes me a few vacation days just to realize that I don't have somewhere else to be tomorrow, settling down and enjoying the time I have allotted to relax and refresh. However, over the years, I have learned the value of taking some time away from your, our busy work lives to kick our minds into neutral and let the rest of the world roll by without trying to keep up. Even a machine needs to be shut down for a while. Let's all make the day count.